Hi friends, today we're going to talk about timing, right hand technique and timing. Uh, I've gone through the uh, grip of the pick and that's on a different video. Uh, uh, you can go ahead and look at it on my site uh, to get an idea of how, how I'm holding the pick as compared to maybe what you're doing. But what I want to talk about now is the right hand uh, pendulum metro, uh, metronome momentum mo uh, motion. <laughs> that was a lot to say. Okay, first off, let me just say I'm using a medium gauge pick. I use a medium because I don't want to hurt my right hand. Uh, if I use anything heavier than this, I have to force the pick through the strings, and this I don't have to. Now, it's not so light that it makes a lot of uh, pick noise. If it does make pick noise, then I tighten this thumb muscle a little bit, which actually just tightens the, the, uh, the thumb to the uh, index finger, and therefore takes the slack out of the pick. That's all that's doing right there. Um, uh, but it's this thumb muscle that actually does that, and you can see that's what moves my, my thumb to squeeze tighter. Uh, I either use my Dunlop 73s, which are uh, on the internet called Steve's Two Thin Yellow Picks, but they're quite manly, or I use my um, Blue Chip Pick, which uh, they made special for me. This is a uh, Blue Chip 30, and you can find this on my website as well. Uh, but it's, uh, it's the only place you'll find them because they don't make them for the general market. Um, they are a little thinner, and they do have a, a guarantee if you ever break it they'll go ahead and and uh, replace it if you send them the pieces back um, so I uh, for the same pick now don't get a 30 and not like it and break it and then get a 35 don't don't do that anyway uh, so I use those and uh, because it's a uh, this is 0.73 and the uh, and the blue chip is a 0.75 so they're so close um, it's a great both of them are great picks okay so what we're talking about here with the right hand is uh, as far as the grip goes I've already covered that I have about a half inch of pick exposed and I'm gonna sink that much pick into my strings now I have a half inch on the front side you can see my index fingers pulled out of the way my thumb has to allow for a half inch as well I don't know I can't get you the money shot there you go uh, it for people that have uh, their index finger goes down to the tip well now that's all the pick I've got exposed now you know, so so front or back, it doesn't really matter. That's all I'm going to get into the string. So I, I go ahead and pull my index finger back. Now, it's I'm not going to pull it back so much that it causes tension. I'm just going to pull it back out of the way. All right. Uh, I'm going to sink about that much pick in there. Now, on the, uh, the video of the grip, I mentioned um, put your pick flat on the first string, which is what I do now. Also, I'm posting my little finger on the top for my lead play. When I'm doing rhythm, I don't. Because see, in your rhythm, you want your right hand to make make it look like you're shaking off water, and uh, so that gives me. When I did that run right there, that little finger went right down to the top. Okay, it doesn't have to push hard. It doesn't have to anchor. It has to post. Okay, and there's a big difference between those two. Anchors, it's not going to move. Posting, it's going to move as you're moving your wrist back and forth. Okay, so if I put my pick flat on the first string. Uh, I've set my mechanism up. Now I'm going to take my index finger basically and pull it back towards my wrist, but I'm going to leave my wrist the same. So what that ends up doing is it takes my pick and bends it forward about 20 degrees. Okay, I guess for you guys it's going to go that way, right? About 20 degrees forward. Now that makes a big difference because it allows me to skim off the string. I'm sinking in there deep, but it's just hitting the edge. And it hits the uh, left bottom on the, on the down strike, and it hits the right top on the up strike. Okay? And it, it, it's not like hitting it flat where it has to cut through all that surface area. It's, it's hitting the edge of the, uh, kind of like the edge of the, of the pick. Uh, another thing it does is it makes, you can take a pick and bend it flat while it's flat, but you can't bend it from the side. So it stiffens it up just a little bit. I don't know to what degree, but an engineer in one of my workshops <laughs> told me that, so I have to believe it. Okay, so now I'm flat on the first string. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull my uh, index finger back towards my thumb. And what that ends up doing is it bends my thumb, so it gives me a little bounce in the right hand. It allows me to have a little bounce in the right hand. Okay, that's where the articulation comes from of the right hand. So instead of being, if I had a flat thumb, it would... Going to hit this way. If I can, and I really have to think about this to do it. If I bend my thumb, it, it's almost a natural thing for it to have this 
Uh, we call it a loose feel, a dotted eighth note, and then a sixteenth after it. Da da da. Instead of going da 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 da, da it's going to go da 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 da. And my fiddle tune stuff is pretty much like that. If I played it straight. See how straight and, and stiff that sounds. So my thumb being bent allows me to articulate a little better. Okay, so, and, I, and really what it does is it loosens up the mechanism because when you're practicing slowly like that was slow, when I'm practicing slow, I want to be as relaxed as I can possibly be because I know that when I speed up, tension will occur. You've already felt it, I'm sure. So just, you know, be aware of that. You, know, you have to find the things that, that uh, keep you relaxed from the very beginning. A real heavy pick doing flat picking like that is, is kind of hard because uh, it's hard to push through those strings. So the medium pick works great for me. Now, let's talk about the, the timing of things, though. Quarter notes are hit down. Boom, 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 boom on the downswing. If you were patting your foot, your foot would be going down on those beats. Down, down, down. And they call it a down beat for a reason. Down pick, down beat. Okay, your, your right hand goes down up on all the eighth notes. So if you have two eighth notes, the first one's down, the next one's up. The first one's down, the last one's up. If you have four tied together, the first one's down, the last one's up. Down, up, down, up. Okay? Down, up, down, up. Just like your foot's going to be patting. You, and, and in the beginning, I do highly recommend you learning to pat your foot while you're playing at the same time. Four beats a measure. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, of course, my little finger's to the top, but I'm not pushing down hard. and two and three so your and beats are always hit on upswings and your numbered beats are always hit on downswings and that's so simple you know the reason I, I i and now some some cases you'll see it written a little differently if you're looking in a church hymnal it's going to be written differently you're going to have strings of notes that have flags on them and those are eighth notes so to figure the right hand out group them together in sets of two or four and down up down up okay uh, another thing that happens in, in uh, sheet music is, is uh, you'll have a, an eighth note and then a quarter and then an eighth. Well, I've told you all quarter notes are hit with downswings, but that way, eighth note, quarter, eighth, the eighth note is the first beat of the measure. That's hit with a down. The quarter, I told you they're all hit down, but in this case, it's occurring on the and beat, right? So it's really like this. You've got a quarter note which which lasts for two eighth beats right but you still have to go down and then up on this one let it hang for this one and then come up on this one and that's the way that would be played but I never write it that way what I do is I write them out as four quarter note four eighth notes one and two and and I put a slur between these two so you still can visually see that this is your first eighth note this one's your second you're gonna hold the note the slur means to hold don't play this one but your right hand is still going to make the motion, and then you come up on this one. Okay, so if you look through some of my sheet music, you'll see it, you'll see it that way. Usually in the intermediate advanced stuff, and the beginner stuff's not going to have a tie like that, if I can help it. You know, it just depends on the song. All right, so now, uh, if you follow that rule, with the exception of triplets, and with triplets, I just say you're on your own. You know, they go down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. <laughs> Until they're going too fast, a little faster than that, and I would have to go down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up. You know, they're, they're, those are uh, uh, too fast to hit two downs in a row. Because, see, what happens when you hit two downs in a row and they're, they're eighth notes or triplets, it locks your hand up and it puts you off balance. What we try to do, let's take a song, um, uh, Blackberry Blossom. You can see my hands just going back and forth. Da, 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 da. One and two and three and four and. But when I learned early on that I was screwing that up is when I hit from the fourth string to the third string, which should be a down up, but I hit it as down down. 
when I hit it down down it threw my right hand out it also put a gap in there of time because it's slower to hit the two downs even though you think you're hitting in the right direction I can go down up a whole lot faster and in time than I can, than I can go down down in time down down in time means I have to put the brakes on and then release for the second note okay so they're down up now it doesn't matter how syncopated I get watch my right hand I'm gonna swing it wide which I want you to try to do when you play slow this is not easy to do yours is gonna sound like this until you get a grip on uh, aiming your right hand doesn't take long to narrow down just what you want to hit. Now if I do some syncopated stuff, and the pull-offs and the, and the uh, 16th notes. If you watch the right hand, it's just traveling and allowing the time gap to occur for the hammer-ons and the pull-offs. And the slides. Slides are the same. So my hand travels and fakes the swing when there's a hammer on a pull off or a slide. Now when you get going fast and you're out there in the real world, you don't do the faking stuff. But your timing will uh, just occur knowing that your right hand is on track. The other thing I want you to practice, like I mentioned, is swinging real wide. So take the songs that you know fiddle tune wise and slow them down to like 60, 50 beats a minute. happens there is there's no way to to mess up the down ups you can't you can't uh, mess the down ups up and there's there's no way to get, to get out of time if you keep your notes plowing through the only time you'll you'll mess that up is you can't think of what you're doing next you know what wh where does it go uh, then you don't have it memorized you know that's another story that's another video how to get it in your head but but as far as playing it it you're going to end up swinging real wide <laughs> Hardly, I'm hardly gripping the pick, just enough so it doesn't flop around. That's it. No more tension. So I'm using momentum in my swing. I'm driving through the notes uh, because I'm swinging so wide. I'm just letting my hand fall through the strings and I'm recoiling it up and then it falls through again. So it's a very light uh, right hand thing. The thing with momentum is that you don't get your arm tired because you're not using muscle to hit your notes. You're just swinging it wide and that's as loud as you can possibly play. <laughs> You're working on your timing, you're working on uh, some of your tone, you're working on um, finding where your strings are and knowing where they are by swinging wide. I, I, I can't think of a better exercise for anyone and it's the Tai Chi of flat picking. Play it slow so you can do it fast. If you play it fast and skip this step you may not be able to play it at all. All right. So watch out for the right hand. Quarter notes are down, eighth notes alternate. Watch your timing, try to tap your foot. Uh, watch your grip on the right hand. Look at the grip uh, video that I did uh, in the free downloads on my website. And, uh, uh, you know, just pretty much that's about it. You know, it's, it's, it's not hard to do, but don't fight it. People fight it, and that's when they get in trouble. Okay? Watch the right hand. Watch the right hand, because I'm watching you.